from the uh, West Ham United squad, a uh, cause for concern. Uh, we'll be discussing that and a lot more things. Uh, welcome along to Friday Night Pint Live. My name's Nicky Hawkins, and I've got two of the boys in the uh, the house tonight. We're having a little rotation. Scotty, how you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, man. You? Yeah, not too bad, yeah. <laughs> we're just discussing haircuts. The barber's got a little bit ham on my hair today. He's gonna he's giving me a full stone cold Steve Austin. So we're discussing how many haircuts Scott's got left. Um, which we <laughs> I like the way I like the, the way Scott went all higher pitched. He went, yeah, I'm what you? This is Payson. I went all I went all Ian Bill on you. Yeah, we've got nothing left. <laughs> uh, and Ryan's in the ass. Uh, we've got a few things to discuss tonight, boys. Um, but before we get uh, into that, I've got to show you, right? So we're forever trying to evolve how we create, um, you know, content. So look, things like the thumbnails and things like that, right? So I've been experimenting this week with AI because AI is making some advances in, uh, in, in the technology world. And I was creating a video saying about how we're going to rebuild after the Declan Rice sale, which we'll be discussing a bit later, right? And I've got to show, I've got to show you these two thumbnails that come up, right? So the first thing I typed in was Declan Rice Arsenal, right? And this, this is what it, it brought up, all right? You ready for this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right, so, so that's the Declan, that's what AI thinks Declan Rice is going to look like in an Arsenal shirt, right? <laughs> Fuck knows where they got that from, right? What do you reckon? Any good? We will we be using them anytime soon. It looks like one of them. You know when you used to play Pro Evolution Soccer back in the days. <laughs> it? it looks like one of them players. He ain't yeah, he ain't done um he ain't done a good job on Declan Rice. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. So he ain't, he ain't done a good look at Declan Rice. Right. So now. Right, the next thing we put in is David Moyd rebuilding. David Moyd's rebuilding, right? And this is what the AI thought that I meant by David Moyd's rebuilding. You ready for this? Yeah, go on, mate. To <laughs> <laughs> be fair, Moyd, he looks better. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like fucking like Steve McLaren. He looks like a cross between Harry Redknapp, Steve McLaren, and that geezer that they kept getting pictured at the World Cup. What the hell so, is the thing in the background meant to be? Uh, That's Gary Neville's nose. <laughs> <laughs> you got a Conference League trophy. <laughs> yeah, that's someone nicking the Conference League trophy, but it's up their arse and they're sneaking out. And for <laughs> some reason, they've got their Johnson out. <laughs> but, what, what's the, but what's this thing in the middle? It looks like a bit of his shirt has come off in the middle here. He's play, what's I'm he playing with? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's Lego. Yeah, it's yeah. got a bit. I don't know why there's a Lego set there. But he really yeah, that, that, that Lego set would probably move more than Suchek. <laughs> but, um, I love you, Suchek. Anyway, anyone that's getting a little bit concerned with AI, don't worry. It's not quite taken over yet. Um, right, so let's get right into it. Welcome to everyone. Uh, we will be taking your comments as usual, so please get involved in the comment section. Uh, we'll be putting them up on screen. Um, so, right. <laughs> Uh, so first, first subject, Paul Nevin. Paul Nevin is uh, as 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 departed the club, and uh, you know I was discussing this a little bit on a video that we done yesterday. Um, uh, me and a guy from the West Ham way uh, saying, "Is this concerning?" Now, when you look at it in the in the in the in the, uh, in the grand scheme of things, you know people depart clubs. Every day, you know, people like come and go out of clubs, you know, things don't work, things, you know, people move on. But uh, this is, is becoming a little bit of a habit now because we've already had, uh, who was it? Remind me who, who went earlier. Well, we've had Mark, Irvine. Mark Warburton. Alan we've Irvine. Had Irvine leave, Stuart Pierce, uh, Warburton and now Nevin. So there's only Kevin Nolan and the goalkeeping coach that from the original backroom staff that Moisey brought in. Yeah. So, um, you know, staff are sort of departing. And the, the, the I won't say concerning, but the, 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 the uh, interesting thing about this one is that obviously there was a claims of a, a whistleblower last year in the first team saying that there was a very, um, strained relationship between Moyes and his staff, and there was been, you know, there was meetings between players and you know first team coaches and, and Moyes, and it was all filling in deaf ears. And it seems that 
Paul Nevin could have been the whistleblower. Now, you've got comments from Mark Warburton last week, um, uh, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago now, saying that he wanted to depart um, because of... He didn't want to ru ruin his relationship with Moyes, which, you know, they get on well outside of work and all that sort of thing. And now you've got Paul Nevin, who seems to have said that, you know, there's there's players and staff that are very concerned about the way that Moyes is running things at West Ham, <clears> which if you look at the league form last year, not Europe, because Europe was a different kettle of fish, but the league form certainly suggested that there were a few unhappy people. Is this concerning? And, and you know, before we let in all of these members of staff walk out, you know, should we be looking at the David Moyes situation again? Right, let's um, discuss. Yeah, I mean, it's not, to be honest, it's not really concerning. I don't think it's that concerning because we'll bring in new people. I think that we've been linked with the one that's just left Arsenal, who obviously worked with David Moyes at Manchester United. Yeah. Um, sometimes, you know, look, it didn't go well next season. So maybe freshening up the backroom staff might be a good thing. You know, Nevin's obviously linked with England. He works with England. He might be getting a job. I think he's been linked with going to someone abroad. So, look, as long as they leave on good terms and, and that, you know, it, it don't really bother me that much about backroom staff. You can you can always move people around the football club. Um, new coaches come in, new ideas come in. Um, obviously, Moyes has got to let them get their um, ideas across, which was a big issue uh, with some of the backroom staff last season. So I'm not too concerned. I'm more concerned about getting players in um, and getting the Declan Rice uh, deal done and out of the football club so we can start spending that money. Yeah, mate, I think you've got it bang on. You know, it's not an overall major concern that coaches come and go, you know, the timing of it probably is a bit questionable. You know, it's literally they're back on pre-season training and someone's walking out the door. So, again, I think it's timing that is a little bit worrying. But, you know, like you said, new people come in, different ideas. It didn't go right last season. Like, like you said, Nick, Europe was a different kettle of fish. The league form and the league performances at times were very, very woeful. Mm -hmm. So having new ideas around the football club could help us progress. You've got, you've got to remember as well, you've got to remember as well, Scott, that we've got this new technical uh, sporting director coming in. He mm -hmm. might have put some coaches uh, towards David Moyes and mm -hmm. said like, you know, I recommend these. And Moyes might have thought, yeah, I want to bring them in. So mm -hmm. you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Obviously we know when they, when they leave the football club, we all think the worst and think there's, bad stuff going on behind the scenes. But you never know. It might be a good thing for West Ham. It, mm. it might be what the players need, new training ideas, freshen it up, you know, new voices in the dressing room. Because we're obviously losing Declan Rice. You, you're losing a big voice in that dressing room and a big personality. So, yeah, I, I, as I said, I'm with you, mate. I'm not too concerned, if I'm honest. I just want um, – hope they can just get uh, the new coaching staff in within the next mm. few weeks. Because as you said – Pre-season training started and we've got our first game on Monday at Boreham Wood. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, that's the worry. And the thing is, you've got as well, you've got all this money coming in from the Saudis at the minute with that, with what they're doing out there. You know, coaches as well as football players are being offered ridiculous amounts of money. So you don't know whether that's got part to play with sort of a, a so to speak, coach merry-go-round. You know, you actually manage this merry-go-round, but, you know, coaches have started to do the rounds now because there's more money out there for them. You know, as much as there's this money out there to attract um, the footballers, <clears throat> you know, coaches, physios, kit men, that type of thing, you know, you, you, you can see them going out there and getting big, you know, pay rises for the similar sort of job they do here. So, yeah, look, I'm with you. The playing side of it, that needs to be addressed quickly. The coaching side, you know, there's plenty of coaches out there who have fresh ideas, younger coaches who are looking to make a name for themselves and looking to prove a point. So let's hope we get some good ones in. Well, you know what I'm like? I'm always the uh, an era of optimism, and I look at it quite slight, slight, slightly uh, differently. I'm sorry, my wife just laughed in the background as I said that. <laughs> um, I am a little bit concerned because, as you say, like the timing isn't, isn't great. You know, if you're going to depart, you normally depart at the end of the season. You sort of... You know, we, we it was it was only a, a well actually it was a month ago today that we was in uh that was in Prague. 
Um, so they've had a month off. So they had a whole month to sort of mull it over. And normally, if there was a, an agreement in place that he was gonna he was gonna leave, that would have been done sort of straight after the final game. It would have said his thank yous, his goodbyes, his his this and that. And um, you know, he he would have he would have said that to, to you know to to get back to pre season training, uh, and then all of a sudden he's out the door. Uh, you know, it, it seems to me maybe they've had a discussion. You know, maybe they've had a a few words in the office. You know, we're, obviously it's speculation. I don't know. I don't know anything. But this is a, a, a couple of the claims that were made by the whistleblower. Uh, so it's it, the, the claims that were made by the whistleblower is coaches and players are aligned in dislike of Moyes and his methods. Uh, Moyes took Kevin Nolan and Paul Nevin off set pieces and claimed control of them himself, which, you, you, you know, it's not a a secret that we didn't score as many set pieces. Um, dynamic among the first team coaches is broken with ideas and instructions ignored by Moyes in game. Uh, Alan Irvine, who left his position as assistant coach and switched to a technical advisory role in May 2021, is regarded as the mastermind behind West Ham's initial success under Moyes. Uh, and senior staff and player have, have voiced concerns to the board, but they fell on deaf ears. Um, and after departing last month, Warburton Kennedy admitted that his friendship with Moyes was in danger if he did not leave West Ham. I would say there was no smoke without fire, if I'm honest. Um, you know, there's there's obviously a, a, a problem now. Um, what I would say is this, is that if it can't be resolved amongst the staff, then it's down to the manager and the manager's discretion uh, to get rid of backroom staff. And if their full trust is in David Moyes, you know, so be it. And, um, you know, I, I know my opinions and I know a lot of other people's opinions, but at the end of the day, our opinions, they're just opinions. You know, we're not making the decisions in, in the boardroom. So, yeah, you can see it two ways, but, you know, it's uh, it's one of them things where I sort of look at it and think, what what you know, what exactly is going on? You know, as you say, Alan Irvine, Stuart Pierce, Mark Welbert, and now Paul Nevin. You know, I know there's people coming in, but you know, if if any of them claims are to be uh, believed from the whistleblower, um, which you know, I, I I must say this, I, I did hear this these sort of things from sort of reputable sources um, last season as well, you know, as well as reading them online after a little while. Then it's I th I think that's concerning, you know, and um, we've got a lot of players there worth a lot of money that. You know, if you if if some reports are to be believed this you know this week, you know some of them are still a little bit concerned with the way Moyes is approaching things and lo losing a big voice. You know, two captains in two seasons not easy. It's not easy to to, to navigate that sort of thing. So, yeah, um, I am a little bit concerned. Scott, take some comments, mate, and then um, I mean, and then we'll. This to me. Well, well you're concerned, and we ain't. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the premise of it, isn't it? Silly. See, it's more. It is just. You know, it's. It, let's just. Let's just see what happens over the next couple of weeks. I mean, as uh, someone said in the comments, the uh, ex Arsenal assistant worked with Moyes at Everton as well, which I didn't know. So, you know, it, it might be someone that he's wanted for a long time, and and obviously, he's been working with Arsenal and Arteta. Um, and obviously, he weren't in a position to leave, so it might be a good thing, you know. As well, I'm glad Kevin Nolan is still there. I hope Kevin Nolan stays on because I think he's good around the dressing room and good with the players. Uh, I see the videos of him training yesterday. Uh, sorry, not him training, but in training. Um, so yeah, mate, he might even step up a bit. So it's moving. I'd like to see West Ham really freshen it up and bring in some young, hmm. young coaches. You know, there's one the one coach that I'd love to see us poach from Tottenham and I think he'd be brilliant for West Ham is Yaya Torre but I don't think that'll ever happen but I think it'll be brilliant for us to get someone like him at the, in the football club he's doing well with, with Tottenham's youngsters so who knows someone like him may be coming in the football club Is it worth getting a young coaches if you've got an old manager? Not really I, I think like it depends because if you get on well it don't matter how old you are you know I think that you know, having younger people around the dressing room, younger players, um, I think it's always a good thing. I think it's proved it over the last few seasons uh, with bringing the likes of Kevin Nolan in. You know, he's he's not that long retired. Um, you know, he played with some of these players like Creswell, Antonio, towards the end of his career. So I, I like to see us mix it up a bit. Um, 
and bring in uh, bring in some talent. But look, we've got a lot of talented coaches in that in that um, in the club already. If Mark Robson, who I mentioned last season, I'd like to see move up into the first team. I think he's a brilliant coach. He has been for years. Um, he's done well at Charlton. He's done well at England. He's done where everywhere like he's been. He's been brilliant. So you know, there's some good coaches already in the football club. But go on, Scott. Yes, yeah, there's a few here. We got <clears throat> when it wants to work. So my computer's running a bit slow, so I apologise. Uh, of course, it's not so. We'll get another one. Chill. Don't make a fuss about everything. Uh, tonight, I think to worry about nothing, nothing have, to worry about. Yeah, nothing to worry about. Two coaches, no new players. <laughs> Lost our best player, captain, and have an aging squad. Not excited about next season. Boyers will be on par with the likes of Wolves. Can't see Moyes lasting three or four months. Hopefully Tim can save us. Peter says, I think all the coaches can get better contracts at other teams. Somebody needs to talk to Sullivan. Iron says, what is worth getting any back from staff? Moyes doesn't listen to him. Moyes needs to go. Oh, sorry, I've already done that one. There we go. Next one. Harry said, let's be honest, Moyes doesn't know. Oh, I've already done that one as well. Yes, someone else must have starred that. Sorry. Why would we start to say one twice? <laughs> I don't know. It, it, yeah. We shouldn't see what happens after 10 games. We should see what happens after 10 games. I still think we'll have a much better season in the league than last season. Torre just taking a job in Belgium as assistant. Dom says, Nevin leaving doesn't concern me really. He's a tactical coach. His tactics of sitting back influence Moyes. Don't forget he works for England as well. And we saw the disaster class against France. No, you got to say the end of it. you got to say the end of it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Even though need the FMP tonight, not taking the deck news well, to be honest. Only at West Ham do we go backwards after winning something we should be building on. And £4.99 super chat from Matt. Cheers, mate. Just all of my Prague mugs, they look pucker due to the trophy. Wanted Moyes to stay, but seems now no one wants him. But just Sully, our first five ain't easy. Do you know another person as well that we might be able to tempt him to join in? Gary O'Neill, just left Bournemouth, obviously ex-West Ham. He might want a, um, a first-team job somewhere, but maybe coming to West Ham for a little while. You know, he's a good coach. So, yeah, you don't know. There's a lot of options out there, but anyway... We're yeah, not absolutely. Concerned. I like him. Um, let's get on to the next subject because uh, you know we we, we are you know, scraping the barrel with that one a little bit. But um, Declan Rice, let's not avoid it anymore. Right? It looks like it looks like it's it's he's gone in for a medical today, and it looks like it should be over anytime soon. I I'm, I would assume Monday. I reckon for an announcement video from them. Um, Obviously, it's, it's, it's been a long, painful process, really. You know, watching, you know, watching the, uh, the the sort of circus around Declan, and I'm sure he's he's probably just switched his phone off and gone on holiday and not read a single fucking thing. To be quite honest with you, um, are we glad it's over? First of all, probably it's not um, fully over yet, is he? He ain't gone. Yeah, he's not fully over, but. Look, if he's having his medical today, he's not going to fail his medical. You know, yeah, look, I just want it over and done with now, out the door. You know, of course, I'm upset and disappointed that he's leaving the football club because he's a he's a talent and he's our captain. But life goes on. Football moves on. We move on. So just get it done and let's get players in the football club that want to be there and want to play for the football club. You are right, mate. That's it now. You know, it's been a long, drawn-out saga. It's, you know... In 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 a way, I give Sullivan credit. He's dug his heels in, and he's got the deal that he wanted, and probably the better deal for the football club. Um, you know the the ridiculous payment instalments that Arsenal wanted to pay is you know that basically they reap the benefit from having Declan Rice while we have to live off of peanuts for the next six years. Um, so you know it's it, it's better, but it's now about spending the the the, the money wisely, bringing quality players in, and and building the team around. Uh, our best players that we've got now, you know, yeah, you're not, not going to replace Declan Rice no. with a like for like player. We know that, but you get in two players that are decent, then they'll do a job. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of there's a lot of players out there that we can bring into this football club that can do a good job for us. 
Um, it's going to be, obviously, look, it's going to be a massive loss, Declan Rice. But look, do I wish him well? Not really. Do I, will I support him? For England, I will. For Arsenal, I don't care. When we play him, I want to win. You know, I'm not going to clap him. I'm not going to boo him. It's just that I'm a bit, I'll be honest, I'm a bit disappointed in Declan. I know he was, the thing is with, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter really like pushing the Declan Rice deal to Arsenal. This is West Ham fans. And I think to myself, there's probably fans out there. If we played them last game of the season, they had to win to win the Premier League and we had to win to stay up. They'd rather see Declan Rice lift the trophy and watch us go down because they're sure. the Declan Rice fan club. You know, we years ago, we had a player at this football club that grew up supporting West Ham, dreamed of playing for West Ham, and he got handed out the football club and got booed every time he pulled on the West Ham shirt. And that was Frank Lampard Jr. And, and like now, it's like... Declan Rice, and yeah, look, he's not a legend at the football club. I see last week, he's not a legend for me. He's a he's a hero of what was a great season and always be remembered in the team that won a trophy. But we've known he's, he's wanted to leave the football club for a couple of years. So it's, it's about moving on from Declan Rice now because West Ham will always be West Ham and it'll carry on, you know what I mean, without yes. Declan Rice. That's it, mate. No, no player's bigger than the football club, and, and that's all it does. It's just, it's now just a restart. Look, he he was our best player, you know, the, the, the most, the best quality player that we had, you know, last season and probably the season before, if not more. You know, he he's he showed a bit of loyalty by sticking with us. You know, he he, he helped keep us up. He helped bring a trophy to the football club, and we thank him for everything that he's done, and we wish him all the best. But like you said, as soon as he pulls out in that Arsenal shirt. I don't care what he gets up to. So long as he has a stinker against us in both games and plays well for England, that's all I care about. He would have gone last summer. But for me, I reckon there was a gentleman's agreement to say, look, Noble's just retired. You're going to be captain this season. Just stay with us one more year and you can leave the football club. That's fine. Fair enough. Um, So we've we've known he's wanted to leave. So I'll be honest, I'm not... I'll be, and this is totally honest, hand on heart, I'll be more upset if Bowen handed in the transfer request tomorrow and wanted to leave the football club because that would be a shock to me. But Declan Rice, I've known he's, he's wanting to leave. So when Pyatt left, it was a shock. When True. Anatomy left, it was a shock. Yes, I was pissed off. But Declan Rice, I've known he's, he's wanting to leave the football club. So, yeah, I'm upset because we're losing a good player. But, look, we're just bringing new players and... Yeah. By next season, we'll have new heroes and we'll have new players we're talking about. And we won't even worry about what Declan Rice is doing for mm. Arsenal. And, and you, you are right, mate. And, you know, now it's time to start building. We, we now, we've we now got to look at, you know, we've got Pat Qatar. For me, he's now our best midfielder. He's the man that we build the squad around. And, and that's what I want to see. You know, look, as I said, thanks for everything Dex's done. He's been a fantastic player for us. Like, we, we've known he's wanted out. He's never threw a strop, never moaned about it. He stuck to his task. You know, he played his best, some of his best football, and you know, he goes on to be successful. I don't, I, for me, I don't think it's the right choice for him as a player, but that's my opinion. You know, the, but... thing, the thing is, Scott, like Chelsea obviously dumped him. We picked him up. We turned him in from a nervous centre back into one of the best defensive midfielders in the world, and he's a hundred million pound plus player. Mm-hmm. You know, so now. We've done that. We've turned him into an England international. You know, we've turned him into a world-class player. We've we've turned him into a hundred million pound plus player. Now, it's, what are Arsenal going to do with him? Arsenal now got to progress his career, so mm-hmm. that's up to them. I'm not fussed now. We've got the best yeah. deal for our football club, you know, and we move on. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I, I I do agree to a certain extent. I, I don't understand the choice personally. Um, I, look, I, it's an exciting project down there, but it, mm. it's a project. Yeah, but the thing, is, seen... the thing is with that, mate, is that you can't deny that Arsenal are a big football club, and they're oh, a big they're, they're a big step up from us. So, mm-hmm. if if for me, like, it could be a good move for him because they've got some good young players down there, and 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 a young manager who's who's, seen, who's worked with the best Guardiola. So, it's it's a it's a project there that in two years' time, who knows? They could be winning the Premier League. They could be challenging in Champions League finals again. But that's you've obviously got to build, you know. You, people got to remember when City first started out, their first major signing was Robinho, and then after that they kept adding and adding and adding. Look at them now. So it's it's hard for, to say that he'll go there and it's it's not the right move. He'll foul because he could have gone to 
Liverpool and fouled. He could have gone to to City or United and fouled. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't think he... in Arsenal in their history, they are a massive football club and it is a step up from, from West Ham. Of course it yeah. is. Of course it is, it is a step up. It's a good stepping stone for Rice. Realistically, now you know you're going from. Oh, you're gonna fucking trigger a few people by saying that, man. I, I, fucking hell! I really don't care, mate. You know, at the end of the day, Arsenal look, they're a good side. They've they've got good history. They are they're a step up from us, but it's a good stepping stone for him. He's gone from playing for us. He's going to go and play in a side that's progressing. They play some really good football. Like Ryan said, they've got a, a manager who's exciting. Work with some of the best, and and what he's trying to do is a good plan, but. Declan Rice will go on to bigger and better things than Arsenal. You know, if that, yeah. if that upsets Arsenal players, uh, supporters, then so be it. It's the oh, truth. You've only got to say what they don't want to hear when they, they get upset. Exactly. exactly. You know but, I mean? Look, you know, look, look, look I, I won't never deny that Arsenal are a bigger club than uh, me Arsenal. Me neither. Than West Ham. But I would say this, right? There, it, there is factors. And it, as I said, it's an exciting project. And I don't know how far they are. But Man City is such a, a well-oiled machine. And why they've got Pep Guardiola there? Who knows how long Pep Guardiola is going to be there? Could be there for the next. He could. He could give up next year. You know, he's a, he's a very sort of uninch character. He's one of them people that you know do things and 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 go places like out the blue. You know, remember when he went to left? You know, uh, Barcelona went on a year sabbatical and ended up at Bayern Munich. Like no one in the world would have, um, you know, would have thought. So who knows how long he's going to be there? But I can't. I'll be honest with you. I can't see any team. Um, beating Manchester City to the to the title in the next two three years, I just can't. I, I think I think they'll dominate it. Why he's still there? Is it a project? Yeah, it's a project. He's twenty four years old, but if they haven't won anything of you know of of, of significance by the time he's twenty seven, he's going to be looking to move on again. Which you know, which is which is you know, it, it's fact. And there's a lot of factors last season that contributed to Arsenal's um, sort of early dominance of the league. You know, Liverpool not being at, quite at the races. Man United are still rebuilding and they've got, you know, they've got their own signings to do. You know, uh, Man City obviously blew them away in the end. But like the likes of Chelsea, they're all going to come back stronger. And, you know, the, the way Arsenal fans are talking at the minute, because I see a comment in there saying they've really shown their true colours. Listen, I don't begrudge Arsenal fans having optimism and I don't want to bring anyone's optimism down but there is a lot of you know they had a a lot of young players that are playing to the top of their game last season and this you know you've only got to have one or two not start the season so well and they could find themselves out of it before they're in it if that makes sense you know settling problems you know losing a a well-established midfield you know as good as Declan is there is still bedding in periods for every player and you know, uh, you know, I don't think they're quite as far along as they think they are. But you know, they're making um, progress in the right direction. They, they um, are, they're, they're, they're going places. Well. They are. They are going places. They're just not where a lot of their fans think they are yet. But the thing is, though, Scott, they pushed City right to the to the yeah. to the end, and they've strengthened. They've got better. The three signings, including Declan Rice, once it's done, you know, they've they've strengthened, and they're mm -hmm. they're they're, what, they're doing it early. You know, yeah. they've done the same thing last season. They got in Shuchenko, Jesus, all that early so they can have pre-season with a team. Yeah. And then everyone thought, like, Arsenal going to fall off, Arsenal going to fall off. They did at the end, but they pushed City. Mm -hmm. And City, City, to be fair, they won the league because of Haaland. You know, yeah. that's that's but, the main reason and, why they, why they won probably, the league. But they'll probably win it again because of him, because he is the gold machine that he is. But I'm I'm with Nicky. Look, there's there's going to be a lot more competition. Teams that didn't take points off of Arsenal last season that usually would, and that it will be that the Arsenal have improved. As I said, I'm not having I'm not trying to dig at Arsenal in any way. It's they are a team on the up. They are doing good stuff. But Liverpool will be better. United will be better. City will be better. Chelsea will be better under Poch. You've still got Newcastle in the mix. You know, well, Chelsea, Chelsea they... just released eight players. Yeah, but the, the Chelsea will be there or thereabouts. You know, they'll be competing. And Chelsea and, and... won't be able to spend what they have been spending. Of course, over the of course they won't be able to. No, exactly. But they're they probably going to sign Mason Mount. Would you say that was a world-class signing? Would you say that's a better signing than Rice? Of course not. 
But what it's, it's not about who's the better signing. What I'm saying is, is they won't have a better season than what they had last year. They'll be there competing again. And and this is the thing. They they these teams, City still dominate for me. It's my you know, that's that's my opinion. City will dominate. City will dominate for another oh, yeah, team. I'm not, I'm, listen, I'm not sitting here saying Arsenal are gonna win the league next season. No. I'm not saying that. But Declan Rice has not joined Arsenal to win the league next season. He knows that. No. He's exactly. probably been told the dream that we want to be winning this whole project two years, two to yeah. three years. Yeah. And look, no. I've got no doubts as well that I think Rice will be captain now. Yep, hundred percent. I think they've already probably had them discussions with their captain, whoever it is. Oh, is it Odegaard? I think they'll probably say, look, you know, Declan Rice, bring, we're bringing him in. We want him to be captain. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Arsenal's midfield three is a scary midfield with Declan Rice in that now. Yeah, it's probably, yeah. It's probably the best midfield three in the Premier League for me. And yeah. as I said, but I, I just feel overall, I think there'll be more competition pushing... Arsenal this season, I think you know. As I said it is. It is an in, it is an improving side. It's a good side to watch. You know, yeah, Arsenal. You've got, you've got obviously uh, Man United, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, Tottenham, Newcastle. Now you got you got six teams trying to get into four places. Mm -hmm. So, and then and you've also got you go below that. You've got teams like um, Villa and Brighton. Uh, I, I know we had a shit season next year, but I'm going to put us in that sort of next bracket mm -hmm. as well of teams that are going to try to break that top six. So yeah. the comp the Premier League, 20 years ago, the Premier League predicted itself. You, you play yeah. Coventry at home, Southampton, oh, you win. Now everyone beats everyone. So yeah. It's, yeah. It's, a, it's a good league to I, be in and it's going to be ex an exciting Premier League race. I'm, I'm with you there, mate, 100%. I think next season will be one of the best Premier League seasons we've ever had. Not as a club, but overall as a Premier League. You know, it, it, you, you sit there and look at it. You can't, you can sit with, say, and City like they are probably the best team, but you can't pick the top four. You can't pick the top six because of those teams like Brighton, Brentford, um, you know, teams like that improving, you know, the way Palace finished the season as well. You know, I know they've... Shut yeah, up. The it, thing is, as well... Listen, is mate, they'll be, remember, up, they'll be pushing for top 10. What you got to remember with Newcastle is that they've got European football next season. Yeah. Brighton yeah. have got European football. Ev uh, Villa have got European football. So, them playing like Tuesday, like Newcastle Tuesday and Wednesdays and the others Thursdays and Sundays, and mm -hmm. it's going to be difficult. You know what I mean? It's going to be difficult like, for them to adapt. So... They might fall away, you know. They might fall away from that top six, which allows other teams to to push. So yeah, it will be an exciting season, and that's why we love football. It's what we want to see. As long as we we uh, stay in, but what's Brian smoking top six? I didn't say we're going to finish top six, <laughs> and we're in that bracket to fight so pushing for the top six. six. That's it. Yeah, we are. You know, but you know, Arsenal have also got to deal with um, Champions League football. You know, they've, they've been wanting that back for a while. So they've got to take that seriously. So, look, okay. it, it's, as I said, I think it all adds up to a really, really exciting <laughs> Premier League season for me. OK, OK. Let's take some comments. Um, some Arsenal fans have really showed their true colours during all this. So I'll be honest with you, mate. So have some West Ham fans, I will say that. Uh, West Ham, Rice going to Arsenal is a slap in the face for me. The more I think about it, the more it hurts. Uh, Matthew Morgan says it, it's taking so long. However, I think Sullivan has done well digging in his heels, getting the £105 million payment on his terms. Uh, I, I agree with that, to be honest with you. I think he's done all right, old Sullivan, in this deal. Um, Chris H, problem is we are losing out on key targets because this is dragged on. Yeah, that we'll be discussing that in two seconds, mate. Um, uh, John T says, wonder if we, we the fee will be announced or if they will come out with some undisclosed fee bollocks. Uh, if Harvey Barnes goes to Newcastle, that is a fucking shambles from us. I'll get. I'll, I'll love to get him signed up. Listen, uh, we'll, uh, again, we'll be discussing that in two minutes. Uh, Matthew Morgan, we definitely need two players to replace, re replace Rice and Suchek to form a stronger partnership if possible. Agree with that as well. Um, we've done a good deal and uh, for a change. Karen Brady was in charge for the first time ever. She's actually done a good thing, uh, said David Jury. Uh, pay the money in and get Barnes and Wall Prowse uh, and a couple of other decent players. Uh, says Robert Paddy, Pat Kirk. <laughs> Is that Dom? <laughs> I'm sure that's Dom. Um, we need to get on with our recruitment now. The Rice Saga dragged on for far too long for my liking. Um, I, I think they were saying about uh, the, the ones that 
when you was this comment came up when you was discussing the people that want Rice to do really well. Uh, they're not West Ham, Ryan. Um, absolutely, I, I agree with that. Uh, at the end of the day, he's, he's going to be competing with things that we're competing for. So, um, with all due respect, I love Declan Rice, but fuck Declan Rice. You know, <laughs> he's about West Ham for me. Uh, upsetting that Deck has gone. Really thought he may stay when we won the cup. Gutted, really, but we move on. Uh, our record for spending money ain't that clever, so we'll probably spend it on more has beens, uh, says Kimbo. Miss Hammerette says, I know we've been, we've got to do business, but we've got some good mm-hmm. young uns that we've got to nurture and invest. Absolutely. Um, JT says, Bring in Felix. He's been wearing a Ben Rama shirt. Yeah, I see that in midweek. Um, I think they're mates, to be honest. Uh, Darren Booty says, Don't begrudge him leaving. Wish him every success and thank, thankful for what he's done with us and bringing in the trophy. Time to <coughs> move on. Uh, Thomas Coombs says, evening lads, not an immediate replacement, but I'd like Potts to be given some games, almost look like Dex when I saw him play, very assured onwards and upwards. I think that's the best way that we're going to go is that, you know, we need to try and look into our, our youth ranks and, and, and produce the next Declan Rice, the next mm-hmm. Mark Noble, the next James Tompkins, the next Ben Johnson, the next Jermaine Defer. You know, that's what we should be doing. You know, there has been a, a youngster move on, uh, gone to Newcastle, but we'll be, again, we'll be discussing that later. Um, but yeah, there's definitely, Lots of talent. Lots of talent underneath. Uh, thank you for everything, Declan. I really mean that now. For fuck's sake, can we move on and stop talking about him? Absolutely. Uh, Potato Man says, thought on Scott McTominay is one of the replacements uh, of the CMDM. I'd, I'd take Scott McTominay. Why? If I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah. I've, I'd, I'd definitely uh, take him. I think he's a good player. So, yeah, I think he'd do well, West Ham. Uh, I would as well. Uh, Edward Smith, not one player is bigger than the team. We're getting top money for him. Let's rebuild around Pequetar Pe- uh, Pe- and Skamakar. Uh, we're back in Europe. We're massive. Uh, spend that one dollar. Spend that one dollar. Uh, gutted Barnes going Newcastle. This is the price for messing around. When Villa sold Grealish, they were already prepared. They already spent the Grealish money before they got it. Not, not, no, not West Ham. Uh, it's not a surprise Declan is leaving. Time to move on. Concerns we haven't got anyone through the door. It's the 7th of July. <laughs> Who becomes the captain? Zuma or Gwed? For me, For me I think Gwed. Gwed. Yeah. yeah. I think Aguerd. Um, yeah, or Bowen. I think Bowen maybe, but yeah, for me, uh, definitely Aguerd. Uh, CY says, I hear you, Why? I think there's been a big impact on some of us because although we knew he was going, I didn't expect to see him at Arsenal and it's all happened so quickly after Euphoria in Prague. Um, there you go. More of the same. That should be Noble's job, progressing young English talent. Uh, Frankie K says, I'm disappointed with Rice because he had, he had his art set on Arsenal whilst we were going through a tough spell. Um, Declan will be back with West Ham within five years. Uh, ben Glander says, Rice, uh, with his age, could still be at Arsenal for three years. Doesn't work trophy-wise. He could be 27, could move to City or elsewhere. Uh, and last one, City won the league because of their defensive adjustments. Bet moving Cancelo and Zinchenko for proper defenders made the difference. There we go. Um, lots and lots of comments, lots and lots of opinions, um, which takes us on to our next subject. Um, we, we we seem to have missed out on our first target, Harvey Barnes, which is not uh, not not like West Ham, is it? Why is it taken so long? To, I mean, because we, you know, listen, I, I take things that are you know on the internet with a pinch of salt at times. You know, um, have we identified players? I'm sure they've identified players, but there has been a little bit of movement in the in the backroom staff and all of that sort of thing. And maybe last year there was a uh, a little bit of a uh, uh, what's the word criticism for not moving quick enough, you know, and getting some of the players in quicker. Um, but it, it does seem like we've moved that time. Everybody. Listen, I don't think that's that's a timing thing. Um, I think that's a I want to play Champions League football thing. Mm-hmm. If I'm honest. Yeah, and that's that's what you have to deal with. If any of our targets get approached by the likes of Newcastle, um, they're gonna choose Newcastle because money they're gonna pay the money and they've got Champions League football. So that's that's one thing we have to we have to deal with. And look, we could have approached RV Barnes last week and agreed to deal with uh Leicester, but then if he knew Newcastle was interested, what who's he gonna choose? You know, so yeah, look, you're going to miss out on targets, but it's about once if once they're done and you've missed out on them, move on as quick as you can and try to get yeah. your next targets in. Yeah, that's it, mate. It's it's having it's having that like, well, this is this is these are the areas that we need to improve. These are the players that we're looking for as our main targets. 
if these we can't get these deal done right, then these are the second targets. You know, having having that, not not just looking right. Well, we need to improve in this position. We want him. Oh, we didn't get him. What we're going to do? You know, not having the the preempt of mm-hmm. if we don't get that player, what's going to happen? Or if we get that player and he gets injured, you know, what we're going to do? You know, you've got to, you've got to look at every scenario, and that's I think I feel we we lack that. I think we lacked that last season. You know, we, we ended up with, I still think with Kera coming into the club, it, that was more removed because of the Aguirre injury. So we don't want a similar situation. We want to make sure that we get the players over the line. We need to get them done within the next couple of weeks, given pre-season. We don't want to be flying out to Australia with half a squad, if you know what I mean. You know, you want these players to bed in with their teammates, get used to travelling with their teammates. And we've got a lot of football this season, you know, so it's got to be the right, players with the right attitude for me. Thing is, it looks like our first signing is going to be that is it Zachar- Zachariah Zachariah from Juventus. Yeah. Um who says he wants to join. I know he was on loan at Chelsea last season. Uh I'll be honest, I don't really know much about him, but you know he's what 26, six foot three, you know, Swiss international. You know, if we we're linked with Paul is it Paulinia at Fulham, you know, you get two players like that in you know, mm-hmm. and then obviously we're linked with Wolf Prowse as well. So there, there's a lot of players still out there. And there's, you know, you've got to think that, you know, Skamaka's going to feel like a new signing. I know we've got to add other players up front as well, but you've also got Kulne, uh who's going to hopefully see more of the uh, first team this season. You know, I don't know what's going to happen with Vlasic. You know, he's, he, is he going to go stay out or is he going to come back and have a pre-season with us and see as it goes? But we definitely need to strengthen... All over, you know. We, I think, still think we need a new left back. Um, mm-hmm. I still think we need, um, I say, three three centre mids. You know, because losing Rice, you know, I, think, I still think we need. But but players like Fornells and Ben Rama can be moved around this season. You know, different positions. So it's going to be um, it's going to be a mad mad summer. But Let's just hope that we start getting... Once one player comes in, let's hope that three, four or five players follow in just as quick. That's the, that's the thing. It's also, you know, identifying how we're going to play this season. You know, if, we, if we're going to look to change the way we play like we did the last season, then we've got to build the team around the right players. You know, if we're going to play the counter-attacking football the way we have done, you know, the likes of Skamaka, move them on. The likes of Danny Ings, move them on. Go and find the next Antonio, the next Anatovic. You know, get it done now because if we go into the season playing counter attacking football and looking to play Danny Ings as a lone striker or Skamaka up front with no support, it's going to be another long, hard season with hopefully Europe papering over the cracks. But, you know, we've got Moyes has got to set out his stall early and, and get these get these jobs done because if he doesn't, then we're going to be paying catch up and we would have lost the summer transfer window and then be six, seven games in looking to replace the manager. You know, it, and, and that's the thing, this, this, this trophy win for Moyes has kept him in this job. You know, if he has a bad start to this season, there's going to be a lot of people oh, yeah. calling for his head and he's got think, less ammunition oh, on his side. There's people calling for his head now, mate. And when oh, he's when started, like, for me, the, you're right. The the Europa the Conference League saved him last season, mm. and I think that's why they stuck with him. But now they're going to look at it as they're going to give him. They're going to do it in sections. I reckon they'll look at the first six to ten games. If we haven't improved or results ain't picking up, and we're down the bottom, they'll get rid of him because mm. this technical director ain't going to muck about. No. You know, he'll get rid of Moyes, and he he he's probably already got someone lined up. You know, he 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 uh, appointed Alonso, uh, um, Leverkusen. So there's all you know. There's already probably plans in place to sack David, not to replace David Moyes. Hmm. But it depends. You know, if Moyes wins his first five, let's just say he does, then you 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 just got to then you got to look at the next next ten games after that. So yeah. it's it's um yeah, it's going to be. Moyes we, knows he's on a he's on a, a tight yeah. rope. I think I think we need to look at look at things that Brighton look at uh, seem to be doing their business. You know they they lost the manager. They knew who they wanted in. They got the right manager to fit the club to fit the players that the club had. You know we need to be doing that. And it's look, 
I hope Moyes goes on and, and we, we're, we're challenging for Europe again and winning another European trophy because I don't want to see West Ham foul whoever the manager is. But at the end of the day, you've got to have a backup plan. And we don't we don't seem to ever have that. And that's the biggest criticism Moyes. He has plan A and never a plan B. And that's something that he needs to work on himself. And if he can't do it, then we need to get someone in who can. I'll be honest with you, mate. I, I, I think the whole club's run like that, if I'm honest with you. Is they've got a plan, and if it don't divert, they they panic, rather than looking at alternatives. I, I think the whole club is like that. I don't no, think it's just they didn't panic when it was going wrong last season, which I give them credit for because yeah, because that was their plan. I think if if David if they sat David Moyes, then I'll be honest, I don't think we win that Europa Conference League. I think the new manager concentrates more on the Premier League than he, he yeah. forgets about Europe. I think Moyes, he's got it right in Europe and he's proved it over the last two seasons, even in the Europa League. But as you said, mate, you know, it's these first 10 games of the season, even the first five are important because you look at the first three fixtures. We've got Bournemouth away, you know, we've got Chelsea at home and then we've got Brighton away, you know. So they're three difficult games because we don't usually pick points up at Brighton. We haven't Mm -hmm. beat Brighton in the Premier League. Uh, The only thing that's given me hope this season is that new, new away kit is black and green. And last time we beat them, they had a black and green kit. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I thought I, I, I got a knock at the door there. Anyway. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen, to be quite honest with you. There, there, there never seems to be a plan in place. I want signings. I want... Who would you take, sort of like... See, I... Wall, Wall Prowse, they're looking for fifty million pounds. I think they bang their head a little bit when they're looking for fifty million pounds. But there is reports that he could be available between twenty and thirty million pounds. Now, I think that's good business. You get a player like Wall Prowse, a player of his quality, his set piece ability, a player that likes to pull the strings in the midfield. Not only that, Scott, like you get a leader, a captain material. Yep. You know, yeah, I, I, I would one take thing. him. It's the one thing that worries me is that we're losing a lot of big voices in that dressing yep. room and. Someone like him who has been a captain at Southampton. He's been at Southampton all his life. So, you know, if we could get him between 25 and 30 million or whatever in 35, I still think it's a good deal. How old is he? 29? He's so, 29. Yeah. So he's, he's he's at the peak of his career. You know, it could be this could be his last big move, you know. So he'd be a good addition to, to the team. And I think someone having someone like him sitting behind that, that forward three, just picking up that ball. But working alongside Paqueta, I think it'll be a, a good signing for West Ham. I really do. Yeah. yeah, I, I, yeah I, I think we should be, look, as I said before, I, I would like to see someone develop from the youth. You know, a, a young midfielder coming in, maybe playing a few games, giving them a, a little bit of first-team football every now and then. But someone like Wal Prowse and, you know, I, I would go with someone like that Alvarez from Ajax. I like him. He's He's... You know, it, obviously, he may struggle with the league, um, but he's tough. He's a tough, tough tackler. He's a, he's a, you know, a mean, mean geezer in the middle. And I think sometimes we need that because I've, I'll be honest with you. Although we had Declan Rice, who was a, you know, a Rolls Royce, we also had fucking Suchek running around in circles for half the season. You know what I mean? And I think sometimes we need, we need a couple of midfielders that know their job and, and are good at doing that job. You know, there's one that wins the ball, and there's one that gives it to the other one to. You know, to spray it out wide, or to get it out quickly, or to get it into the into the you know the channels or the forward quickly. You know, and I, I, we've really struggled with that until Pakatar um, sort of you know picked up his form at the end of the season. But then again, maybe Pakatar could drop in deeper where Rice was. You know, people, you know, that seemed to be his best position. Mm-hmm. And maybe we're we're looking at the wrong sort of midfield, or maybe we're looking for someone further forward. Yeah, but, and that's the thing you need to. You've got you know. There's so many aspects of the game that Rice brought to our midfield that you have got to look to re, look to try and replace. And this is why we've said you can't replace that with one player. So you know you've got to look right. Well, do we go out and get a ball winning player? For me, we've got Flynn Downs. He's a ball winning player. He's I'll a player that's off with Flynn Downs. Listen, you don't like him. That's, that's your opinion, right? But the boy can nick nick the ball and give it to someone else. Then you've got to be looking. You need a box to box player. You know, someone like someone who, who when Kyoto came to the football club, who, who who started, who drove with the ball, who could was a dominant in the air, but could get forward and and cause teams problems. 
And then you've got Pakataru who can pick a pass, who can thread the ball through an eye of a needle, you know, who's on the wavelengths of players like Skamaka and, and people like that. It's working out what you want to replace. Like you said, and then with with Will Prowse coming in, you've got someone who's got Premier League experience. He's, he's a captain. He's got a lot of experience that could help players like Potts. You know, if you're looking to bed a, 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 a Potts type of player or bring another young player through into the squad or through in to give them more Premier League game time, then it's good to have an experienced player around them. You know, we, we said we when we had the um, end of the season stuff, when we were talking about um, keeping Creswell for another season. And I said, you know, Scars is the future. You've got to bring him in. You've got to be seeing him play. You've got to give him game time. But it's also good to have that experienced player there that, if we pick up an injury to Emerson or pick up an you know, you're not throwing another youngster into a situation and he's got to learn quickly and learn on his fleet. It gives them that, you've got that experience behind them and, and the players to help nurture them and improve them through to be first team regulars. And it's just that it's getting that balance right now for me in our midfield. I agree with you on um, on Flynn Downs. I, I, I do. I think Flynn Downs is, every time I've seen him play, he's never let the team down, he's done his job, he's come on, you know, he's he's took a yellow card when he has to, he's played smart, you know, and people forget that when Declan Rice was first brought into the first team, he wasn't great, you know, it was only that he was given a run of games and got better players around him that he's, he's game picked up. So, Finn Downs could be an option, you know, sitting him in front of that back four, you know, with better players in front of him, it's an option and, and you know, instead of going to spend 30, 40 million on someone that we don't need, when you've got someone there already. But I agree. I think Alvarez could be a good option. You know, uh, uh, as I said, the, the boy from Fulham, Paulinia, you know, I think that he'll be a good option. You know, so it, there are there are good options out there. We just need to start splashing that cash and getting them through the door because, you know, we've got one thing that we can offer that a lot of other teams can't is European football. So take us out of the fighting with a top four. When it goes down to... Like you, you think if we're competing with teams like Aston Villa, they're in the Euro, uh, the Conference League, and I'm not knocking the Conference League because we just won it. But players are going to look at it and think, yeah, I'd rather play in the Europa League. So there's always that that pull as well. So we just got to just start getting them through the door. John Sal mm -hmm. Salmon says, uh, care in Rice position. Uh, listen, there's a bit of a trend at the minute of defenders becoming uh, midfielders, uh, and I think we started that. So. There we go. Let's take some more comments before we just get onto the final thoughts of the show. Um, every other time we've won a trophy, the follow season, we've got to a cup final. There we go. There's a little fact there for you. Mm -hmm. um, that'd be in interesting. Uh, West Ham versus Arsenal. <laughs> Imagine oh. that. Um, has Antonio been sold to the Canby Island Reserves yet? Uh, Rice money was spent last summer. Um, you might not be much wrong there, mate, because of the financial fair play. But there we go. Uh, do you think we go? we'll go... Back to free at the back since Rice is gone. Um, is it an option? It is an option, but I don't think we will. Be with that, honest. though, if, if we do want to play that back three, we've got to improve on our wing backs. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Uh, Jerry Fisher, gut, he's gone, but I think he's good money for him. Who we want to replace him with? Um, uh, plus, Arsenal doing good business. Don't like saying it. Uh, there we go. Uh, Polly Walnut says Mbappe. Absolutely, mate. Fuck you him. might get on the bench a couple of times. Yeah, I don't think it, it, it boys wouldn't play him over Antonio. Uh, there's a rumor going around uh, Italian want, want to team want to want, want to swap Skamaka for Origi. Uh, fuck that. I hope that is a rumor. Yeah, um, Skamaka is going to be electric this season. He looked uh, buzzing. Yeah, I, agree. I seen him in the training photos. He mm. looked absolutely buzzing. He need cracked a smile at one point. <laughs> Must have started. Uh, Dino Hate says left back gives skulls a go. Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. I agree with that. Uh, though the deal was basically impossible now, would you lads take Will Prowse personally? I would love him. Uh, I think we discussed that. Uh, Cass Simpson says, um, you guys too, talk so much sense. Uh, thank you, mate. Uh, many many would disagree. Uh, Rab Bruce says, I would like to see Joe Jim Anderson playing for us. Class player. I don't know him. No, me neither. Do you know him, right? Joe Jim Anderson? Not really. No. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I should know him. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's going to be the best, the next big thing. But everyone slates James Will Prowse as one trick pony, but he's a graph, the top of the running stats in the Prem last year. Yeah. Um, 
Rand, it's not just about Champions League. If Liverpool went in for Barnes, he would probably go there and not the, in the Champions League. It's also about getting regular playing time. Uh, Jonathan David is another one that I've I've heard time and time again. He's, he's a Canadian striker, isn't he? He is indeed. He's he the one that excites Nicky. He's absolutely superb. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> he's superb. He, he'd be he'd be a good um, good replacement for Antonio. I would love to see him come in, honestly. Do you know what I'd love to see us have shit, a, but... Do you know what I'd love to see us have a punt on? Uh, and I hate him when he plays against us, but he's out of contract. I'd love to see us throw a lot of money and get Wilfred Zaha in. I think it'd be <laughs> the bollocks for West Ham. Do you know what? It would wind would... Palace fans up so much. Do you know, know what? It's not going to happen, but... No, he wouldn't come to... I don't think he'd come to us, but I'll tell you what I'd love to... I would love to see that, because I, I like... Listen, as a person, I think he's a fucking annoying bastard, but... He's a good, good player. Oh, he's he's, he's a quality, you know, he's a quality player. No, that you know, he, I I I take him. He's one of them players. When he plays for you, you love him. When he plays against you, you hate him. The problem yeah. is with him is that he he was too young when he moved to Man United. It was too big a move for him. I think yeah. if he had played at Palace a couple more years, then made that move, it's it probably would work. Yeah. Do you know he played for another club in between? Did you know that? Did he? Yeah, he did. Do you did know he played for right? Who? Zaha. No, Brighton. Was it Brighton? No, no, it wouldn't be fucking no. It wouldn't have took him back to Palace. He played for Brighton. He played for Cardiff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, did, didn't he? That. He did, yeah. And obviously, he wouldn't come because of David Moyes. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. Is there still them rumours? Uh, the walls are slowly falling in around us, and this season hasn't even started. We know what the cause is, but we, yet we're ignoring it. Pat, chill out. Let's let's start the season first before we start whinging, eh? Um, Navidus Wilburn says, me personally, I'd rather risk it with Hudson the Doy than spending big on Barnes. Just on the previous comment, says Nicky, who started the show, saying, I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm concerned. Oh, I'm concerned. I'm not whinging yet. <laughs> Fuck me. Well, come Monday after our first pre-season when we lose 1-0 to Boreham Wood, Nicky would be like that. Fuck in, that's it. But that's no, it. Look, I'm, still, I'm still buzzing for this, mate. I'm still buzzing for this. You know, my heart's still in Prague at the minute. I, you know, I'm not really that bothered at the minute. Um, uh, yeah, me personally, I'd rather risk it with Hudson or Doyle and spending big on Barnes, who doesn't improve us that much. Nah, I, I would have a, I would have a risk on him, man. We're linked I'd with him, and we're linked with Conor Gallagher as well. I think would be Conor Gallagher is the next one. Yeah, I think he'd be a good addition to to West Ham. You know. It looks like Chelsea need to get as many players out as they can. I think they've got about 350 players on their books and I think 320 of them are out on loan. So I'm sure, I'm sure someone said to me they had nine on 50 young players out on loan last season. They run their academy like a fucking tool hire shop. Mm. Do you know what, Scott? I think they've got a player on their books that has never played a game for them and he's been on loan for 11 years. Yeah, I think he's about 29, isn't he? But, He's never made a first team appearance for Chelsea, but he's been been there about 11, 12 years and he's been out alone every single season. Mental, isn't it? Absolutely. Honestly, mental. it's like it's like it's like a tall hire shop there, place. You know, you, you want a player, you go there, pay them a little bit of money, they'll hire you someone. It's fucking mental, mate. Um Steve WHU Bell 499, thank you very much, mate. Do you think Suchik is on his way out? I can't see Suchik leaving. I'll be honest, I can't see him leaving. I I, I... I can't see it because of losing Rice, Yola. Suchek has his critics, but he can be. He's, he, as we said at the end of the season review, you know, he's got his uses. You know, he's you not there. You, to... lose, you lose your rice, you lose your potato salad. We'll have no, car- <laughs> we'll have no carbs in that midfield. <laughs> Some carbs. Yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's got a role to play within the squad. He, for, uh, as we said, I don't think he starts next season. He shouldn't be starting think... next season, but he's got a role to play. Scott, I think he could maybe improve without having Rice there. Well, a lot of people, when you look at the way he was when we first signed into where he was last season, you know, with Rice getting forward more as well, you could sit there and say Rice was a bit of a hindrance on his game because it didn't allow him to get into the positions that, you know, he got into to score the amount of goals he did when we first signed him. So bringing in another holding midfielder, may allow him to get forward. But for me, it's just him, him on the ball. You know, he doesn't offer enough. And I think going for us to progress, that's things we need to improve on. Um, Lucas Moore and Alan Traore are available on a free. Would you take them? I think Traore is 
as I said this before, I think he's Antonio 2.0. I think Moyes would love to have someone like yeah, him. He's a, we, up, he's a greased up Antonio, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I hope we don't because honestly, I've had enough of that sort of football with him. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, yeah. The only thing with Traore is his stats. You know, you look at his the goals. Um, I think he's only scored like 23 goals. You know, and and for a player of his physique and who matches the 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 Antonio, um, you know, the strength, the pace, all that type of thing, you would expect him to get a better return. You know, with the attribute he's got, but his finishing lets him down. Maybe terribly. maybe two or three years ago, I'd have been all over that. But he's not for me. Baby oil, Antonio. That's what we're going to call him. <laughs> I'm worried Pacatai will go to Newcastle if they really want him. I could see him going. Bruno Gomez would be a huge factor if that happens. Um, they just signed Tonali. I can't see him going anytime soon to them. I, I, don't, I think he's going to be our poster boy next season. He's going to yeah. be the main man for us. Yeah. Um, Nadine's um, settled in. You get yeah. the right players around him. You, you, you build a team around players like him. And I think he's going to be... You know, he's, a, he's going to be a big player for us next season. Uh, Baba Rahman is the guy that goes out on loan every season, apparently. Um, I'm sure I had a drink called that, Baba Rahman. <laughs> yeah, I had that in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bamford went out on loan six times. Yeah, that, honestly. Um, need you know, need to get young, fast players. Let's not be the retirement home of the Academy of Football. Um, there should be rules against so many players going out on loan. It can help young players being shipped and signed out for years. Um, some people just make careers out of it. Uh, let's start wrapping up then. Um, there's any other business. Uh, Mukasa's gone, which is which is very surprising. He's gone to uh, looks like he's gone to Newcastle or Newcastle interested. He sort of put an in, in Instagram post out, um, thanking everyone for his time. I think his contract run out. West Ham were interested in keeping him, but. Thinks his future lies elsewhere. Disappointing. One of the under eighteen boys won the cup last year. At the end of the day, good luck to him. You know, if that's what he wants, he don't want to re-sign for the club. Wants to go Arsenal. Uh, not Arsenal. Sorry, Newcastle. Arsenal on the brain. Go Newcastle. Look, Ashby went to Newcastle. Don't think he's had a game yet. You know, yeah. that's it. So you know, look, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of good reasons to go to Newcastle. He probably. Let's be honest, for a young player, you're looking at Newcastle, looking the way they're going. For me, you've got more chance of getting a game of football at West Ham than you have at Newcastle. You know, unless you're saying special, you're not going to work your way into that Newcastle side. I think, so, like with it, even with Ashby, I think you'll probably find he'll go out on loan next season <clears> to a championship yeah. team because Newcastle, yeah, they signed him because they probably thought they might have needed him last season. But now they're just going to go out and they've got the money to spend and they're just going to go from strength to strength. You know, it's yeah, it's like all these youngsters leave the football club. It's like, who's the one that went to Watford and Ngakia? He's just left Watford and gone to an Italian team, you know? Mm. And he left he left us go Watford because he thought they was going to be the next best thing. And he was going to, you know, these players leave the football club and they don't really go on to have that, great of a career but look wish him well good luck to him if, if he don't want to resign then yeah we're, the way we're producing youngsters at the moment I think if one leaves we've got two or three ready to come yep. in and take his place so uh, absolutely uh, let, before we wrap up Ryan King who's an Australian ammo he's been on our channel before hello Ryan how you doing yeah, mate, mate? Uh, we're West Ham coming out to Australia next week uh, I've organised a West Ham fan 11 versus a Spurs fan 11 we'll be raising money for the DT38 Foundation Hopefully get two wins over Spurs. Wish us luck. Absolutely, mate. Good luck. Yeah, uh, good luck if, if, there, if we can if we can repost anything or get a just giving going or something like that. If you've got one going, you know, um, or a link to, to to you know, give us to it and we retweet it. We'll post I'm off it. next week. So if you want to fly me out there just to watch or play, <coughs> you know, I'm happy to I'll put my name down. Yeah, exactly, mate. If you want to fly us over, we'll come over and we'll have a kick about. Even though I couldn't kick you can't have a kick about, you can't even move your knees. I could I couldn't even <laughs> mate, I try do you know what, right? Look, Short story. I tried that that Claude Foundation game. They asked me to go and play. I went out for a warm up, mate. It was fucking roasting hot, mate. I'm finished with football now. That's it. My knee, my knees cannot move anymore. they this. I'm finished. I could never play again. That is it. Do you know I'm what? Though, I, I obviously I play seven aside on Mondays, and it was the best thing I've done, and I love it. I love going over there and playing just an hour non-stop. Um, 
and uh, yeah, like the other, because obviously a couple of months ago, I cracked, I fractured my shin, shin bone. So I was out for a few weeks. And since I've been back, I, I, I keep pulling out of challenges because I'm too scared to do it again. Because, uh, but yeah, the other day I got caught in it and it, it bruised up a little bit, but it was fine. So yeah, fully recovered now. So looking forward to it. So any charity games, any charity games events, I'm available. I can play, you know, I'm uh, looking forward to it. Uh, Ryan says, uh, lads, would love you in the team. We'd get our transfers done quicker than the club. I'm in, mate. <laughs> fly, me fly, fly me over for a... I don't, don't even need a medical. I'm all right. I can walk and drink. that do. That's that's enough for a fan 11. Uh, breaking news. Nicky Hawkins retires from football with immediate effect. Yeah, there we go. That is official. That is official. I'm, I'm officially announcing that. I will Nicky never... Ever... in 2006. Yeah, four? No, seven. Seven. 2007. Um, Nicky Hawkins equals Dean Ashton. Actually, when I had my accident, we was the same age. Mm. There we go. Um, so yeah, there we go. I'm officially retired from football. So I, um, I, I think we should do like we should try to organise something, having a little little kick about or, or something like that. Um, I think it'd be good. I know it's saying I spoke about before, but you know, I think it'd be good. I know there's a few things coming up, so it might be good. Absolutely. Nothing better than putting on your football. Like, listen, my brain thinks I can still run, but I don't. I don't sprint no more. If I know I'm not getting there, I'm not running. There's no point. I'll just wait for the ball to come back to me, and then I can give it to the, the fast players. Mate, I'd, I'd need about two months' notice because I'm gonna get out of breath running from here to the shop at the minute. No, nah, mate. Me and Graham running ping... from there to the shop. I'm just using an example, you know. Oh. Me and me and me and Graham ping it around on Mondays, man. Like Graham's in good shape now. He's he's playing yeah. well. You know, I'm back in the gym and and you know I'm I noticed that this shirt's a lot looser than it was on in like than it was in Prague. So um yeah, and no, I'm doing well. I'm enjoying it, mate. You know, mm -hmm. getting, this, getting this, this one's a bit tighter. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm getting getting my life organized, you know. Big big changes in the last few weeks. So yeah, it's about being happy. And uh yeah, and no, I'm enjoying it. Enjoying it, mate. Uh, Johnny says West Ham fan TV versus Claret and Blue Booze. I won't, I, honestly, mate, I'm, I'm never playing again. That's I'm done. I'm I'll probably done. take that because there's only three of them and there's five of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but one's Dan and one's me, so that's three versus three. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and one Scott, he can't even run to the shop, so it's just me and Graham. Oh, yeah, listen, I'll, I'll get myself in shape to have a game of football if you if we needed to. Don't worry. Uh, FMP two live two. Any dates yet, guys? Aiming for the beginning of the season. So in about a month or so, month and a half or something. Um, but we, we'll let you know. Uh, that's just come up with Sky Sports. Nicky, thank you very much. Uh, Nicky Hawkins, more of a club legend than Rice. Thank you. And Ben Rama might leave West Ham. We'll leave it on that note. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on this edition of West Ham Fan TV's Friday Night Pint. Again, we'll be back next week and there will be football to talk about after we go to Ballroom Wood. Um, as I said, we're going to start the transfer videos next week. We're going to be looking at all the transfer targets. We'll start doing the rebuild. I'm going to get different guests on for that. Uh, and yeah, um, maybe I'll bring back the musings this week as well. See what you guys want to talk about. But there we go. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, one thing left for us to say. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons.